Hi there, John McAdams here with you again. And in this video, I share the results of two ballistic gel tests for the 22 ARC. So first, I shoot this load with the 80 grain ELDX from the Hornady Precision Hunter line. Here's what your bullet looks like for it. And I also shoot this load from the Hornady Superformance line with their 70 grain CX bullet. So I did two gel tests with two very different types of bullets. That very tough copper CX bullet and the unbonded softer lead core Hornady ELDX. Now, both of those ammo lines, both of those bullets are designed and marketed for big game hunting. Both are also relatively new releases Hornady announced in late 2024. Now, they originally rolled out the 22 arc with three different factory loads. One with the uh, 62 grain ELD VT, one with a 75 grain ELD match, one with an 88 grain ELD match. I already did a ballistic gel test for those three loads in another video. Check it out for more details on how they perform. Now, those three loads really weren't designed or marketed for big game hunting, though people have used it in that role. So these two loads I'm testing here today with the 80 grain ELDX and the 70 grain CX are the first and, at the time I record this, the only factory loads available for the cartridge with those specific big game hunting bullets available. So that's what we'll test out here today. Now, just like I did for that other 22 arc gel test, I shot this particular test using my Odin Works upper receiver. This rifle has an 18 inch long barrel and I used a Banish 46 suppressor. Now you may have noticed I have a thermal scope on the rifle right now. That's because I have it set up for hunting. I used a normal scope uh, to actually shoot this test. I shot all of this ammunition into gel blocks 50 yards away. And as always, I measured all velocities with my Garmin chronograph. So let's get shooting. We'll start with the ELDX ammo. I'll shoot that particular load into the gel, do a brief analysis of how it performed, then move on to the next load. Now, I actually tested two shots for the ELDX to see if there is a significant difference between new and older gel blocks. The new gel blocks are clear, and as you use the gel more and more, it gets darker. So the older stuff has uh, a more darker color to it. I'll show both shots and analyze both side by side, and we'll see if there's a difference in how it performs in the new versus the older gel. So let's get going. Okay, let's take a look, see how these bullets performed in the gel. Very short neck, small to medium sized wound cavity, Got some bullet fragments radiating outwards. The bullet does deflect downwards a little bit and stops right there just inside the second gel block. All right, let's see how it did in the other gel block. Very similar size neck, very short like we like to see. Medium sized wound cavity. Also got some fragments coming off of it. Bullet also deflects downwards a little bit and stops right there. Here is what the wound tracks look like next to each other. And when I measured them, very similar in overall size. All right, I'll pull those bullets out, get you some more info. Okay, I pulled those ELDX bullets out of the gel. The recovered bullets weighed about 54 and about 53.3 grains respectively. So about 66, 67% weight retention. Pretty consistent performance in terms of weight retention here. Both expanded to over twice their original diameter. Uh, but their final shape and diameter were similar, but not exactly the same. Both shots were just over 200 feet per second slower than advertised. But remember, that is out of an 18-inch long barrel. That is 6 inches shorter than advertised. Do the math here, that works out to about 35 feet per second per inch of barrel. More or less what you'd expect probably pretty close to 3,000 feet per second as advertised out of a 24 inch long barrel. Accuracy was fantastic with this stuff and shooting this Precision Hunter ammo was almost like playing a video game on cheap mode. This stuff also produced a very impressive wound cavity. It has that very classic football shape here too with a short neck, wide wound cavity that extends for several inches and then it drops, out, drops down, bullet continues to penetrate. 
lots of fragmentation in the gel. This is outstanding performance out of a 22 caliber cartridge. Much more impressive than what I have observed with other 22 cal rounds like the 223 or even the 22250. This 22 arc ammunition delivered both better penetration and a wider wound cavity than the stuff from the 223 or the 22250. Now compared to the 22 arc, only the 22 Creedmoor has performed better out of everything I have tested, but the 22 Creedmoor was shooting the exact same bullet, just going faster. Now I did shoot two hogs in early 2025 with this exact 22 arc ammo. Check out that video for details, but long story short, this ammo worked great. All of my shots exited, neither hog took more than a few steps afterwards. I even shot the larger hog again after it was dead at a strongly quartering two angle through the front shoulder at basically point blank range. That bullet also exited even after punching through that front shoulder and it made it cleanly out the off side, just behind the offside shoulder. So at least with these particular hogs, 16 inches of penetration in gel looks like it was enough to not only reach the vitals, but to also exit. For what it's worth, I shot both of these hogs initially at almost exactly 50 yards, just like I shot these gel blocks at too. Okay, so all in all, pretty darn good with the ELDX bullets. Now we'll move on to the CX bullets. Okay, here's how the CX bullet performed. Nice short neck, and here is our wound cavity. Looks smaller in diameter, but longer than what we saw with the ELDX bullet. Bullet continues to penetrate and angles downward and stops in the second gel block just past 17 inches of penetration overall. Move this ruler so you can see a little bit better. Surprisingly, there's more fragmentation than I would have thought. There's a piece of the bullet there, there, a little bit there, a little bit there. So that bullet looked like it held together reasonably well, but some pieces of it did break off and make their own uh, separate wound cavities radiating outwards from the main track. But all in all, we have a little bit deeper penetration and a little bit more narrow wound cavity for the CX compared to what we had for the ELDX. I'll pull that bullet out, get you some more info about it. The recovered bullet here weighed almost 64 grains, so just over 90% weight retention. As you can see, there was some asymmetric expansion. Uh, it looks like the bullet lost a little bit of that uh, pedal that is sticking up, plus it lost some parts of the pedals on the left side of the bullet in the photo. It lost more mass than what I usually see from, co from a copper bullet like this, but weight retention was still really good. It did expand to over twice the original diameter, not literally picture-perfect expansion, but pretty close. Now, velocity was also a little slower than advertised with this stuff, but once again, shooting it out of an 18-inch barrel, actually a little bit closer to advertise with the CX bullets than what I observed with the ELDX bullet. Now, the CX bullets were not as accurate for me as the 80-grain ELDX bullets were, though. Uh, this was not a bad group with the first four shots, but I had that one flyer. I did shoot a couple of groups. They all look like this with four pretty good shots and one flyer that really opened things up. Your mileage may vary, though. This stuff demonstrated different terminal performance than the ELDX ammo, though. It penetrated deeper, but it had a more narrow wound cavity. Really not a gigantic difference in performance between these two bullets, though. The ELDX wound cavity was about 25% larger in diameter. The CX penetrated about 5% deeper. I was actually a little surprised the CX did not penetrate deeper than that, though. Now, I have not used this particular CX bullet afield on game. I've used other versions of the CX, just not the 70 grain CX hunting. So I can't comment directly on how this stuff will perform on game. I will say, though, that just because the wound was smaller than what the ELDX made doesn't mean that this stuff is bad or it won't work. Now, additionally, the CX bullet did produce a longer wound cavity than the ELDX. Even though the ELDX produced a wider wound cavity, 
it was a little bit shorter than the one the CX produced. So the difference in volume between these two wound cavities was smaller than you might think just by looking at how wide it was at its, at its widest point. Additionally, the CX will probably be more likely to exit and more likely to hold together when striking a solid object like bone than the ELDX. Another advantage of this ammo is that since it is lead free, it doesn't leave any lead in the meat. You'll have maybe a few copper fragments in the meat like I observed here, but not a lot of stuff. Now, copper bullets like the CX do need more velocity to upset than lead core bullets, especially a softer lead core bullet like the ELDX. Now, this CX ammo does use a lighter bullet going faster than what we observed with the 80 grain ELDX. And it was also going quite a bit faster. Even so, you can see that it did make that more narrow wound cavity. Performance will drop off as range increases and as that uh, impact velocity decreases. So your maximum recommended range for the CX bullet is probably going to be shorter than for the ELDX. But all in all, I think the CX is great for a situation where you want to preserve meat. It's great for a situation where you want more penetration not so good in a situation where you are taking a longer shot. I probably would have observed similar performance on those two hogs I shot in real life with the 80 grain ELDX if I used the 70 grain CX instead. Possibly a slightly slower kill with uh, that body shot on that second hog, but really impossible to know for sure. Now remember, results in clear gel like this don't normally translate one-to-one -one in real world situations on game. Bullets tend to penetrate better, but not make as large of a wound cavity in clear gel like this versus a real life animal. So the results should be taken as a general trend. I'm not saying that if a bullet penetrates 17 inches in gel that it will penetrate exactly that far in real life animals. But I am saying that if a bullet demonstrates wide, shallow penetration in gel, then it will also probably produce a wide, shallow penetration in an animal. The same is also true of narrow, deeper penetration. The general shape and characteristics of the wound will probably also be similar. Likewise, if bullet A penetrates better than bullet B in gel, well, it will probably penetrate better than bullet B in an animal too. So take all that for what you will. Let me know your thoughts on this subject. Have you used the 22 arc of field with any of this ammo? How did it perform for you? I welcome your feedback. Likewise, leave a comment on this video. Let me know the cartridge bullet combination you would like me to use in the next gel test I publish on YouTube. So far, I have published a bunch of other gel tests. They are all on a YouTube playlist for you to browse. I'm open to suggestions from what else you'd like to see from me in the future. And also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and good hunting.